Hi, and welcome to Meetings of Math. You are here for section 7.3, the Pythagorean Theorem. Our essential question is, how are the lengths of the sides and the hypotenuse of a right triangle related? Today, you'll need your jack bar jots on section 7.3, a pen or a pencil, a highlighter might be useful. Leave your calculators behind, but you might wanna bring with you a multiplication table. Your bright ideas, your self-confidence, and always bring your problem-solving skills. Let's begin by labeling the parts of a right triangle. Let's begin by looking at the right angle on a right triangle. The right angle of the right triangle is going to lead us directly to the hypotenuse, which is a, the side opposite of the right triangle. And the hypotenuse we are going to label as C. And again, remember, it's always opposite of the right angle. So start with your right triangle go across and label that your hypotenuse, and we're going to label it with the variable of C. And then the other two sides are called legs, and you can label those A and B. It doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B, it's interchangeable, but they are both called the legs. Now that we have our triangle labeled, we're gonna talk about the Pythagorean theorem, which many of you are probably familiar with and have heard about it, but we're going to go ahead and formalize it. The Pythagorean theorem says that the sum of the two legs squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now that's a mouthful, and that's why we give them variables. And so what we say in variables is that a squared plus b squared, that's the sum of the two legs, is equal to c squared. It's a whole lot easier to say, but we need to understand that it's the two legs, we're going to square those and then add them together, is equal to the hypotenuse being squared. All right, so example one, we're going to find the value of C. Let's begin by counting the squares on each of the legs and compare those to the squares on the hypotenuse. So if I look at the very first one, it's a three by three because this is three long and I actually squared it. So how many green squares do I have? I have nine green squares. And let's look at the other side, it's a four by four orange. So how many orange squares do I have if it's a four by four? Well, four by four is 16, or I can actually count them and I have 16. So now let's go look at the other one. I can count them individually, or I can do a little math. Um, I'm gonna make these ones yellow. So that was one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five. And so I can tell that there are 25 here. So how are nine and 16 related to 25? Well, the two squares, again, are nine and 16, and the last one is 25. Well, nine plus 16, when you add them together, that actually equals 25. So now let's see how this works algebraically. If you go back to what we said, which was a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we should we can see this in a nice picture. So algebraically, a is three, so let's substitute that in. b is four, so we're gonna substitute that one in. And now three squared and four squared, well, three squared is nine and four squared is 16, and nine plus 16 is 25. So how do we undo a square with a square root? So we're going to do square root both sides. And the square root of 25 is five. So we now know that the length of C is five, but we already knew that because of the work we did with just the picture. But we can now state that we know that this right here is five long. And we can see that with the picture we drew. So this was just a nice little picture way of understanding what was happening. So now let's go on to the next example and do it without the picture. So we need to figure out what's A, what's B, and what's C. Well, remember A and B are just legs, so I can put it in either place, it won't matter. So let's go ahead and put A as eight, and you might find it helpful to label the sides and be as 15. So for example, 
I might decide to put my letters directly on here so that this says A and this says B. Some people will find that very helpful. But now we're just going to substitute into A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You need to write this down on every single problem every time you start. And by writing this here down, this is going to help you keep track of your variables and what it is that you're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem. So now we're gonna substitute in your variables. So A, you substitute in eight, and B, you substitute in 15, and C, we don't know, so it's going to stay C. So eight squared is 64, and 15 squared is 225. 64 and 225 is 289. And now to undo that, you have to take the square root of both sides. And since you've taken the square root, it's now 17. Now we're not going to write the square root again because we did it. And we're not going to write C squared because we did the square root to get rid of it. So we know now know that this hypotenuse is 17. So now let's look at this problem. On this problem, remember, if I go directly across from my right angle, that is my hypotenuse. So C is always opposite the right angle. So that means that 25 is C. And 7 is either A or B. It doesn't matter which one you put it in for. So we're going to go ahead and put 7 in for A and 25 in for C. And you're going to write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So now you're going to substitute in what you have. So seven was A and 25 was C. I now simplify those parts. So seven squared is 49 and 25 squared is 625. I now subtract 49 off of both sides and you get 576. Again, I subtracted 49 off both sides. So now you have to take the square root to get to 224. So let me write some of those pieces in for you if you're not sure how we got there. This was subtracting 49 off of both sides. And then I took the square root to get to 24. So in example 2b, we have a triangle with side lengths 9, x, and 15, and we're trying to figure out what x is. We start off these problems like we're starting off all of them without writing our Pythagorean theorem, ax squared plus bx is equal to c. And we do that because a, it's Pythagorean theorem, and we can find the missing size of right triangles using that. And we write this down so we can substitute into it and also so we don't forget it. We also list down a, b, and c so that we know what we can substitute into it. So now when we look at our triangle, we try to figure out what are what is a, b, and c. I like to start with C because that's the one that looks different. Remember, C is our hypotenuse, and a hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So across from the right angle is 15. So we can fill in our C with 15. A and B, those are interchangeable. They could be either one, either one of those two legs. Doesn't matter which one's A and which one's B. So we're going to write down A as our 9, and then B is our X. So now we're going to substitute that into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So every time I see a, I'm going to put a 9. b is going to be our x, and 15 is going to be our c. So 9 squared plus x squared is equal to 15 squared. Again, those are coming from right here. So 9 squared is 81, and 15 squared is 225. So now I have 81 plus x squared equals 225. I just evaluated those. So now remember we do that really cool where we can mask it. So I just cover this up because I don't need it right now. So then I can do 81, subtract that from both sides because I'm solving it. The opposite of adding 81 is subtracting 81. So then after I subtract 81 from both sides, I end up with X squared is equal to 144. So the opposite of squaring a number is taking the square root of a number. Remember those are inverses. So when I take the square root of both of them, the square root of x squared is x, 
and the square root of 144 is 12. You should have that memorized by now. If you don't, I want you to continue to use flashcards or an app that's going to help you memorize those perfect squares through 13. And so x is equal to 12. So this side length right here is 12 yards. Thank you so much for joining us in the Pythagorean Theorem. What I would like you to do to finish up this lesson is I would like you to draw a diagram of a right triangle on your own and label the right angle, the legs, and the hypotenuse. Thank you again for joining us, and I can't wait to see you in our next lesson. Please remember to be nice to one another because we all can use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.